Imagine a time when our ancestors weren't crafting tools or painting cave walls, but swinging through the canopy, more akin to apes than humans. It might seem like a lifetime ago, but this was just 7 million years back. Back then, the line between humans and apes was so blurred that it was nearly indistinguishable. Fast forward millions of years to today and the tables have turned. Humans reign supreme, while our closest primate relatives, the great apes, seem almost primitive in comparison. From bigger brains to bipedalism, countless theories have been proposed to explain this dramatic divergence. But one theory stands out. A genetic enigma buried deep within our DNA, chromosome 2. This mysterious chromosome, unique to humans, holds the key to understanding our remarkable evolutionary journey. But what is chromosome 2? Why do we have it and apes don't? And most importantly, why does it matter today? As anyone who has gone to a biology class before will tell you, two things remain constant. The mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell and the cell is the building block of life. Taking things to a more advanced level, we begin to see just how intricate the cell really is and how much it shapes who we are. Besides being the building block of tissues and the smallest living unit of an organism, the cell has another nifty trick up its sleeve. Located in the nucleus of a cell in eukaryotic organisms, which are animals, plants, and fungi, the chromosome is an extremely important building block of who we are. Deciding what we all look like regardless of the animal, species, or type of living organism, the chromosome is a long thread-like structure made of DNA and proteins that carry genetic information. Found in every living organism, they carry the genetic information necessary for growth, development, and reproduction. Essentially, you get everything from skin color to height to even some diseases like diabetes, sickle cell, and cancer all from the information contained in your chromosomes. This is your genetic makeup, your fundamental biology, and what makes you, you. Before we go on, it's important to differentiate between chromosomes and DNA. Although used interchangeably sometimes, the two actually have a difference. While chromosomes carry the genetic information of an organism, DNA is the molecule that contains the genetic instructions essential for development. Think of a chromosome as a long, organized structure composed of DNA and proteins. Each chromosome contains a single continuous DNA molecule that carries many genes. In other words, DNA is the substance within chromosomes, and chromosomes are the organized form in which DNA is packaged. Now, something about the human DNA is the similarities it bears to other animals. For example, we share approximately 85% of our DNA with mice, 60% with fruit flies, about 80% with cows, and about 90% with cats and dogs. However, among all animals, the ones we are closest to are chimpanzees, with whom we share about 98 to 99% of our DNA, making them our closest living relatives. This isn't surprising though, because we both originate from a common ancestor, Although unknown, it is believed we split from the ape line of evolution after this common ancestor, around 6 to 7 million years ago. But here is where things get really concerning, because the questions stand as to what exactly caused this split. What made us so different that we walked upright and built a house? What made us humans? Since the early 1990s, scientists have been aware of a special anomaly within the human genome. At the time, we weren't sure what exactly it was, but we did know something was different. Fast forward to the Human Genome Project completed in 2003, where we mapped all human genes and finally found it. See, the project not only mapped out the human genes, but also the genes of other animals. It was during the project that we discovered that our relatives like chimps, orangutans, bonobos, etc. had 24 pairs of chromosomes. Now, seeing as we all had a common ancestor, logic dictates that if the chromosomes are hereditary, we should also have 24 chromosomes. But surprisingly, to the shock of the world, humans had only 23 pairs of chromosomes. But how did we even get to know this? The simple answer is, we counted our chromosomes through a process called karyotyping. Karyotyping is basically a laboratory technique used to examine the number, size, and structure of chromosomes in a cell. But how does it work? Well, the process begins with collecting a sample of cells, often from blood, 
and culturing them to promote cell division. Cell division is basically how the cell multiplies and is the only time we can actually count the chromosomes. This is because it is the only time when chromosomes are fully condensed and distinct enough to be counted accurately. See, during cell division, particularly in the metaphase stage of mitosis, cell division results in two daughter cells, each with the same number of chromosomes as the original cell. The chromosomes are tightly coiled and visible under a microscope. It is during this phase that the chromosomes line up at the cell center, making them more accessible and distinguishable for counting. Outside of cell division, chromosomes are less organized and spread out as chromatin, which makes them difficult to count and analyze. Therefore, by examining cells during mitosis, scientists can successfully count and study chromosomes to detect abnormalities and understand genetic information. To view chromosomes clearly, the cells are treated with a chemical to stop the division during metaphase. After harvesting and breaking open the cells, the chromosomes are stained with specific dyes that create distinctive banding patterns. These stained chromosomes are spread on a microscope slide and analyzed under a microscope. It is then that the chromosomes are arranged into a karyotype, which is a standardized format that organizes them into pairs based on size, shape, and banding. This arrangement allows for easy identification of any abnormalities, such as extra or missing chromosomes, and structural changes. By examining the karyotype, scientists can diagnose genetic conditions and study chromosomal abnormalities, and in the case of the Human Genome Project, discover how we lost a chromosome. But what happened to our 24th chromosome? Here's the thing. The chromosome of any species is so important that if a single one were to be lost in an individual, that individual runs a high chance of mortality and most likely wouldn't make it past infancy. So what makes us the exception? The simple answer is, we aren't. We didn't lose a chromosome, but something amazing did happen. In 2005, a study was published that showed the human chromosome and its correspondence in chimps. As you would expect, our chromosome 1 aligned with the chimpanzee's chromosome 2. This means they had similar size, shape, and banding. However, our chromosome 2 was where things got wonky. See, there was no corresponding chromosome 2 in the chimps. To make this more confusing, our chromosome 3 was there too, our 4 was there 3, and so on. This pattern once again fell apart when we began looking at chromosomes 13 and 14 of apes. This time, however, it was we who had no corresponding chromosome. However, our chromosome 13 was their chromosome 14, and so on. So what was going on? Where was their chromosome 2? And why do we not have a corresponding chromosome for their 13 and 14? This was the question the scientists asked. And to find the answer, they looked at our weirdest chromosome, chromosome 2. It was here they found something groundbreaking. Normally, the chromosome has these two markers, named the telomere and the centromere. The telomeres and centromeres are essential components of chromosomes, each playing a unique role in maintaining chromosome stability and function. The telomeres are repetitive DNA sequences located at the ends of chromosomes. They act as protective caps, preventing the chromosome ends from deteriorating or fusing with other chromosomes. This protective function basically ensures that vital genetic information is preserved during cell division. Essentially, each time a cell divides, the telomeres shorten slightly, contributing to cellular aging when they become too short. Centromeres, on the other hand, are specialized regions located at the center of chromosomes, where the two sister chromatids are joined. They play a critical role during cell division by ensuring that chromosomes are accurately segregated into daughter cells. The centromere also serves as the attachment point for the kinetochore, a protein structure that links the chromosomes to the spindle fibers, which pulls the chromosomes apart. Essentially, the proper function of the centromere is essential for chromosome stability, and any abnormalities can lead to chromosome misegregation, potentially causing genetic disorders or cancers. Now, this was what made chromosome 2 unique, because upon examination, scientists found that they had telomeres in the middle, where they shouldn't be. But that wasn't all, because it had one centromere in the middle. But there was another anomaly, as further along the section there was an extremely similar DNA code to what you would expect from another centromere. Essentially, there was some DNA code that was pretty much what a telomere code would be, 
between two centromeres. This discovery changed the way we look at our evolution forever, so much so that it even caused the renumbering of the ape chromosome, so they could line up with the human chromosome. But how exactly did chromosome 2 affect us as humans? Quick pause. If you're enjoying this journey through the prehistoric world, don't forget to like and subscribe. More than 97% of our viewers watch without subscribing, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. It would make all the difference. So, is it done? Great. Thanks a ton. When you look around nature, one thing absolutely stands out. There is no animal quite like us. Standing as the last of the long line of extinct hominins, something about humans is fundamentally different from the approximately 8.7 million living animal species on Earth. From our speech to our anatomy, and even the little things like our walking steps and coordination, something about us stands so fundamentally different that we have not seen it replicated on the same scale as ours for as long as we have cared to look. To be human is to be different. But the question now stands, what makes us different? Why can we build bridges, send humans to space, and even shape quite literally all the creations to fit our needs? Well, for the longest time, this question has been the most important on the human mind, shaping our religions, beliefs, and even our perception of reality. But why? It has continued to plague us. Because if we understand what makes us who we are, then we can easily understand how to better ourselves. Imagine a world where no one falls sick, a world where death is a joke, and where everyone looks young, no matter how old you are. That's a world where we understand what makes us human, a world where our species unlocks immortality. Now, this might seem like a far-fetched fantasy or science fiction, but about 70 years ago, Rosalind Franklin, using her knowledge of genetics and X-ray crystallography, managed to uncover the structure of the polio virus. Her efforts would go on to save millions as they helped advance the development of polio vaccines. But polio was just scratching the surface. Today, gene therapy helps us to modify or manipulate a person's genes to treat or prevent diseases. Unsurprisingly, all this comes from the study of genetics, a field that continues to try and understand what really makes a human a human. The history of genetics is quite fascinating as it spans over a century beginning with Gregor Mendel in the mid-1800s. His experiments with pea plants were revolutionary as they uncovered the basic laws of inheritance. As with many great scientists, his work went unnoticed until the early 20th century, when the study of chromosomes revealed how traits are passed through generations. Fast forward to 1953, when James Watson and Francis Crick, with crucial contributions from ever-brilliant Rosalind Franklin, discovered the double helix structure of DNA completely transforming our understanding of genetic information. But that was just the beginning. And soon enough, the Human Genome Project, completed in 2003, mapped all human genes, unlocking insights into genetic disorders and human evolution. Today, we stand at the edge of possibility, as the advances of CRISPR-Cas9 have reshaped our understanding of life itself, giving us the power to cure genetic diseases. Slowly, we are unlocking the code that makes us human, one discovery at a time. But as we look back on the past 200 years of genetics, what have we truly learned about what makes us unique? Since the discovery of the genetic anomaly, chromosome 2 has been subjected to so much study that we even know the exact fusion site of the two chromosomes that make it. Chromosome 2 is located at the region designated 2Q13 to 2Q14.1, on the long arm or Q arm of the chromosome. This area corresponds to approximately base pairs 121,700,000 to 125,100,000 on chromosome 2 in the Human Genome Reference Assembly. Chromosome 2 is at this point seen as a cornerstone of human genetics, playing a vital role in numerous cellular functions and processes. As the second largest chromosome in the human genome, trailing only behind chromosome 1, it contains a wealth of genetic information, with approximately 1,200 to 1,300 genes. These genes are involved in a variety of essential functions that are crucial for maintaining health and development. One of the primary roles of chromosome 2 is regulating gene expression. This is because the chromosome houses genes that produce transcription factors, which are proteins that help turn other genes on or off. 
This regulation is extremely critical for cellular differentiation, where cells become specialized for different functions and for developmental processes that shape the organism from a single cell into a complex multicellular being. Essentially, it helps with the development of many organs and parts that make us who we are. But that's not all. As chromosome 2 plays a key role in controlling the cell cycle, the process by which cells grow and divide, that's because the genes on this chromosome help manage the various phases of the cell cycle, ensuring that cells divide accurately and that any DNA damage is repaired. This is extremely crucial for preventing genetic mutations that could lead to diseases, including cancer. So it not only helps with our development, but ensures we can pass the right genes to our offspring, leaving little room for mutation. Beyond these functions, chromosome 2 also contributes to other essential biological processes. For example, it contains genes involved in immune response, which help the body defend against infections and diseases. It also influences metabolism and cellular signaling pathways, impacting how cells communicate and function. The genes on this chromosome regulate key metabolic pathways, essential for breaking down nutrients and producing energy. Now this right here is a game changer because this efficiency in metabolism allows us to extract and utilize energy from food more effectively. This, as you can imagine, is vital for sustaining the high demands of an active lifestyle and maintaining overall health. A good example is the human brain and its dynamic. Being one of the most energy-demanding organs, the brain relies heavily on this metabolic efficiency. Thankfully for us, chromosome 2 supports the brain's substantial energy requirements, ensuring it receives the necessary resources for optimal development and function. This is especially important during critical stages of brain growth, such as childhood and adolescence. This is because efficient metabolism is crucial for providing the nutrients needed for proper neural development. As our brains evolved to become larger and more complex, the role of chromosome 2 became even more significant. This is mainly because the increased cognitive abilities that characterize modern humans, such as advanced problem solving, social interaction, and language skills, are supported by the efficient energy utilization facilitated by this chromosome. This enhanced brain function, in turn, has provided a considerable evolutionary advantage, allowing early humans to adapt to diverse environments, develop sophisticated tools, and even build complex social structures. Ultimately, the metabolic efficiency driven by chromosome 2 has been integral to human evolutionary success, because by supporting the development of advanced cognitive abilities and maintaining energy balance, it has contributed to our survival and reproductive success shaping the trajectory of human evolution in profound ways. Now, in the realm of cellular signaling pathways, chromosome 2 is nothing short of a hero. See, cellular signaling orchestrated by genes on chromosome 2 has profoundly influenced human evolution, particularly in our capacity to adapt to various environmental and social challenges. That's because these signaling pathways are vital for how our cells respond to environmental changes and stress. For early humans, the ability to adapt to shifts in temperature, resource availability, and other external factors was absolutely crucial for survival. For example, in the brain, these signaling pathways play a critical role in neuronal communication and synaptic plasticity, supporting advanced cognitive functions like problem solving, learning, and memory. This in particular has allowed humans to develop complex thought processes and social behaviors essential for survival and thriving in diverse environments. Moreover, effective cellular signaling is fundamental to our immune system's adaptability. This is because it enables the body to recognize and respond to a wide range of pathogens, providing a significant evolutionary advantage by enhancing disease resistance and survival. But that's not all, as the flexibility provided by cellular signaling extends to cellular differentiation and developmental adaptations. This flexibility supports the development of various tissues and organs, allowing humans to perform a wide array of functions and adjust to different life stages or physiological changes. Overall, the role of cellular signaling in regulating these processes has been crucial for human evolution. It has enabled us to adapt, survive, and reproduce in diverse environments, shaping our evolutionary trajectory and contributing to our complex and dynamic nature. But somehow, 
that's not all the chromosome has provided, as it houses one of our most important genes ever. You might not know it, but we owe our humanity to a set of genes that play crucial roles in regulating the development of organisms. These genes essentially encode transcription factors, which are proteins that bind to DNA and control the expression of other genes. These genes are characterized by a specific DNA sequence known as the homeobox, which encodes a conserved domain called the homeodomain. This domain allows the proteins to bind to specific DNA sequences and regulate gene expression during embryonic development and tissue differentiation. Basically, they guide the organism during its formative years in the womb and also guide how the organism's tissues grow. The tissue responsibility might seem lesser on the surface, but you must consider the fact that an organ is simply a collection of tissues, and a system is a collection of organs. For example, the heart is made up of muscle tissue, connective tissue, and endothelial cells, all coordinated by homeobox genes to form a functional organ. Similarly, the brain, skin, and other organs are products of intricate tissue development guided by these genes. So essentially, these sets of genes control everything from your skin to your entire nervous system. They guide the formation of tissues, the assembly of organs, and even the integration of these organs into functional systems. Now here's the truly fun part. Chromosome 2 contains a substantial number of homeobox genes. In fact, these genes are scattered throughout the chromosome and are involved in essential developmental processes. The importance of these genes cannot be overemphasized. For example, they control the spatial and temporal expression of developmental genes, ensuring that cells differentiate into the correct types and are placed in the right locations. A good example would be to say they play a role in limb development, organogenesis, and the formation of the central nervous system. As humans, the evolution and diversification of these genes have allowed for the complex body structures and functions that we enjoy today. The evolution of homeobox genes on chromosome 2 has also essentially contributed to the increasing complexity of the human body. See, over millions of years, changes and duplications in these genes have allowed for the development of more intricate anatomical structures and physiological systems. For instance, the expansion and diversification of homeobox gene families have been linked to the evolution of unique traits in humans compared to other primates and mammals, like the evolution of the neocortex in the human brain. As you might have noticed by now, the homeobox genes on the chromosome 2 are particularly important for brain development. This is because they influence the growth and differentiation of neural progenitor cells, which give rise to various types of neurons and glial cells. This regulation is extremely crucial for the development of the complex and highly functional human brain. Essentially, changes in these genes may have played a role in the expansion of brain regions associated with higher cognitive functions, such as reasoning, language, and social interaction. In fact, on a general scale, the role of homeobox genes in evolutionary development is evident in the morphological changes observed across species. In humans, the fine-tuning of these genes has allowed for adaptations that support bipedalism, advanced tool use, and even sophisticated communication, everything that makes us human. In essence, the evolution of chromosome 2 and its associated homeobox genes has enabled humans to develop unique physical and cognitive traits, distinguishing us from other species. But it's not all good news, because beyond development, homeobox genes on chromosome 2 are also involved in regulating processes that can impact health and disease. As such, mutations or dysregulation of these genes can lead to developmental disorders and congenital anomalies, something we will touch on later on in this video. But until then, the new question is, when did all chromosome 2 fuse and set all this into motion? Although not widely accepted, it is believed that the fusion of chromosome 2 occurred approximately 2 to 3 million years ago. This chromosomal rearrangement would have marked a crucial divergence that set the human lineage apart from that of other great apes. This fusion likely happened in an early hominin species, a direct ancestor of modern humans. Although the exact species that underwent this fusion is not known, it is believed to have occurred in a common ancestor that predates the emergence of the genus Homo. This ancestor would have shared many genetic traits with other great apes like chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. But the fusion event set the human lineage on a distinct evolutionary course. 
Although not generally accepted, genetic evidence is the most direct support for this timeline. By comparing the human genome to that of our closest relatives, such as chimpanzees and gorillas, scientists have observed that these apes have two separate chromosomes corresponding to human chromosome 2. The fusion of these two chromosomes in the human lineage is evident from the presence of telomere sequences, normally found at the ends of chromosomes, located in the middle of human chromosome 2. This internal telomere structure is a remnant of the fusion event, providing a clear genetic marker of when and how the chromosomes joined. Besides this, fossil evidence also supports this timeline, as the fossil record shows a gradual progression of hominin species with increasing brain size and complexity, which correlates with the timing of the chromosome fusion. Essentially, the evolution of early hominins with more advanced cognitive abilities and larger brain capacities aligns with the period during which chromosome 2 likely fused. Additionally, comparative genomics offers further support because by studying the chromosomal arrangements in various primates, researchers can trace back the evolutionary changes that led to the current human chromosome structure. The divergence of chromosomal structures in the human lineage compared to other great apes reinforces the estimated timeline for the fusion event. Together, these lines of evidence create a coherent picture of the chromosomal evolution that occurred around 2 to 3 million years ago. However, the impact of this fusion extends beyond human evolution. For other early hominins, the fusion of chromosome 2 may have conferred several benefits. It could have led to increased genetic stability and reduced the likelihood of chromosomal abnormalities, providing a survival advantage. Or the fusion might have facilitated more efficient genetic regulation and gene expression, supporting the development of complex traits and cognitive functions. The possibilities are truly endless. Sadly, for all the good this chromosome has done, it has its flaws and they are very deadly. Although chromosome 2 plays a crucial role in various biological processes due to its extensive array of genes, it comes with a huge danger, as abnormalities or disruptions involving this chromosome can increase the likelihood of several genetic diseases and conditions. One significant area of concern is cancer. This is because chromosome 2 is involved in the regulation of cell growth and division. So abnormalities such as duplications or deletions can contribute to various cancers. For instance, alterations on this chromosome have been linked to leukemia, lymphoma, and several types of solid tumors, making it a huge contributor to tumorigenesis. In addition to cancer, chromosome 2 is associated with several genetic syndromes. For example, Prader-Willi syndrome, characterized by growth and appetite regulation issues, can arise from deletions or disruptions on this chromosome. Similarly, while Algerman syndrome is primarily linked to chromosome 15, genetic abnormalities involving chromosome 2 can sometimes mimic its symptoms, including developmental delays and neurological problems. But that's not all, as neurodevelopmental disorders also have connections to chromosome 2. Research has found associations between this chromosome and autism spectrum disorder, ASD, suggesting that specific gene variants on chromosome 2 may influence brain development and increase the risk of ASD. Additionally, some studies indicate a role for chromosome 2 in schizophrenia, with certain genetic variations potentially affecting brain function and contributing to the disorders. But it somehow gets worse, because metabolic disorders are another area where chromosome 2's impact is observed. Although mucopolysaccharidosis type 2, or Hunter syndrome, is primarily associated with chromosome X, Genetic variations on chromosome 2 may also influence enzyme activity related to this condition. Overall, chromosome 2 is integral to many essential functions, and its abnormalities can lead to a diverse array of diseases and conditions. It facilitates who we are from the start and continues to guide who we are until we die. Chromosome 2 today is a strong contender on the table of what makes us human. But not everyone sees it that way. What do you think? Was the fusion of chromosome 2 the event that made us into who we are, or was it simply an abnormality that continues to plague us with the worst of diseases? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey through prehistoric times, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more amazing insights into the wonders of the ancient world. Until next time, stay curious.